Hi guys, Steph, Dan and Matt for another edition of Pies Chat Show. We're here today for the review of the West Coast game and what a disappointing ending it was. Yeah, it's the, from the, from the get-go, uh, first quarter, copping 40 points. You can't expect to win too many games and get a result when you start off like that, can you? No, it was a repeat of the Melbourne game. We just let him in too easy, too quickly and couldn't stop the bleeding. Picked it back a little bit. But it wasn't Look, I think some really good signs in that second and third quarter. I like to take all the positives out. I don't think it's a season-defining game, like was mentioned in the coverage. I think we let them in early, like you said, Steph. You can't do that. We mentioned it in the preview show. You can't do that, especially at West Coast away. Uh, we, we let them get on top, five goals to nothing in the first ten minutes, and um, we're really playing catch-up footy from there. So... Like I mentioned, in our second and third quarter, we put together some really good footy and we really took it to them. Right. Where'd so they get on top of us? That's the question. Where'd they get on top of us? Well, you look straight at, we're at, the, at the ball drop. Nick Nat Nui. First, first bounce, it was just clearance after clearance after clearance. His first quarter, um, you know, it was unstoppable. He's had a career high, um, a career equaling, a score of 19 hitouts to advantage. Yeah, that's the game right there. I mean, you look at the stats, we've got 47 hitouts to 25, and that uh, that then leads to 42 clearances to 30. They're two stats that really glare at me and say, that's where we've lost the game. It just it just seemed like Grundy was really intimidated. when. Correct! Yeah, he did, going, he going, did going, look like Nat Nui got into his head. Yeah, he tried, to play, the, he tried to play the body, he tried to play the man. He, uh, he, just, he, wasn't he was to... conscious of him. How much more comfortable did he look... When Lysette comes to the ruck. Yeah, that's right. He monstered him. He absolutely destroyed him. And they're the key moments we got back into the game. The other thing is, having, having your, your guys here at the centre bounce, you know, if Nat Nui is kind of dominating, maybe they should have kind of roped to him. Well, than hoping for Hawthorne Grundy did it to... the week before, didn't they? Yes, they, they did. did. And we, well, we failed to do it, even if they looked like they were going to do it. Greenwood didn't have that impact that he had against Zacharakis on hands that day, against his opponent. You know... Shuey and, and Pritis. Pritis didn't have his best game against us. He usually tears us to shreds. He didn't have the best game, but Shuey really dominated right, right there. When he wasn't duck in his head. All right, guys. Another thing that we pulled apart from uh, the West Coast game was Bucks went with a really high press going into forward 50. Tried mm. to lock the ball in. Yep. Um, a lot of the time, I reckon we copped about seven to nine rebound goals like this. It was just... It, we locked in... And then they get a quick kick out, and we were just so high. Chase the tail. Yeah. And on that ground too, it's a long, skinny ground to press up that high. It just exposes three quarters of the ground nearly. And a fast running side like West Coast, it's really dangerous. And it's been a theme throughout the year. Well, look, Coast if, to Ghost goals. If you leak one, two, even three goals like that, okay, it's understandable. But the fact that Simpson caught on to that, and around the 50, he had a couple of fast guys mm. around the. Uh, around waiting for the ball drop once that quick kick was out and they just took it away. It yeah. was almost dangerous for, for us for to right. score a behind because the West Coast kick out, they were affecting that so well, they were breaking that high press where the only man that was in between centre and, and our forward 50 was Frost. He was definitely that sweeper. That's right. Everyone else was inside the forward 50 at such a high press and you're going to cop a couple of goals, rebound, coast to coast goals because that's, that's right. how modern footy's played these days. But to cop so many like we have, not only in this game, but like you said, in the yeah, whole season, been thing. that's definitely, um, you know, it, it, maybe it is a successful plan, whether they, and they're not executing it, who knows, but that's something that I'm sure they're looking at, and we need to, um, we need to improve on. Well, I think um, once that happened, I think he should have changed, the, Buck should have changed the game plan, and gone maybe a bit more man on man, um, just to try and slow the game down, slow the momentum down, and then try and push forward again. Um, another thing was... The fact that Reed wasn't as influential going in, third man intercepting, yeah. um, and Brown kind of got tailed up a bit against Kennedy. First Easy. quarter, he was all over him. I thought the change should have been made early. Well, we're lucky Kennedy wasn't kicking straight. Didn't have his kicking boots on. That's right. He could have made it a, an 80-point game just, just off his boot. Now, do, you re do you reckon there could have been a couple of changes made there? So what would you have done? I personally think I would have played, I would have swapped Reed and... Uh, Reed and Brown. Oh, Steph, I don't know. I reckon I would have gone Frost to Kennedy because he's like like you've touched on it in the past. He's got the closing speed, and I would have had Reed continuing as the third man, and Brown goes to Darling, who didn't have an impact. I don't know. I think Darling gets up the ground a bit too much. Where 
I don't think Brown could keep up with him. I think having well, Brown... he hasn't played. He hasn't played a lead out role like that since his fantastic performance in the grand final against Rewald. No other forward that he plays on moves up the ground. He's more that deep of role. So Steph's got a point there. Yeah, but throwing the challenge, I just think if if you put Reed man on man, we lose that versatility. Well, yeah, I know, but I think having Brown go third up, you know, he's got he's got the gold, the golden fist basically. If he needs to get up just to just to kill it. Yeah, just yeah, to no, kill the ball. It, you make a ball. And just and start again and reset and start again. And I think that maybe that would have been a good idea. A few headaches there but, for Bucks, certainly. Another thing where I just want to touch on, for Solo, Prince of Perth didn't have that impact. Don't even think he hit the score sheet. So he's another one that... Was he there? He, well, he's probably signing autographs on the boundary. Well, he did, look, he did, when you have ball in hand, he did a couple of good things. Waited well, set up a goal or two, but... He wasn't this has been the criticism of Fasolo of his career, though. Yeah. He plays two or three good games, and then he goes what? missing. We need him to stand up. He's now a he senior player on minutes. the list. Come on, fast. We want to see you kick goals, mate. It was all of those mid-sized players. We didn't get enough out of Fasolo. How how really has it hit his straps in the black and white? No, still no, finding yeah. his feet. And even when you look in defence, you know, Maynard's still a young player, still learning. Those guys really, they struggled to impact and they lost the 50-50s against their opponent, especially our small defenders. Lacroix and Cripps, you know, both hit the scoreboard. We touched on that in the preview show, but they're dangerous small forwards can kill. So you one bloke who looks like he's been around for about 150 games. Big coxie. Yeah. Doesn't he get around the ground well, and he brings the ball down, he keeps it... He just keeps the game simple. I'll tell you what, and even the one percent as he's getting around, that smother against that new... Get a crisp him. long goal from 50. Oh, for that some, was getting us up in a bell. I really some, thought a comeback was on there. For someone who's 211 centimetres, he moves, he moves like a little robot, doesn't he? He's yeah, quick. Foxy. He's bloody quick, isn't he? Ah. Uh, all right, guys, it's time for the injury report. Dr. Dan's in. All right, guys, straight from the medical room here. So, out of the game against West Coast, we had Langdon with that uh, tackle causing him to go off with the ankle, ankle issue. Uh, wasn't the knee which was first thought, but it is that high up syndesmosis injury that he's got. So he's definitely going to miss this week. Syndesmosis. Could miss a couple. Uh, so watch that space with Langdon. Sinclair copped another concussion. That's two in three weeks. So I'm assuming that they'll be ultra conservative with him. He'll have to uh, jump through a few hoops to get up to play against Carlton. Probably unlikely. The good news is Varko and Adams, after both missing... Uh, look to be on the track this week, which is a good sign. Need to do a few things right to um, get the nod of approval from the selectors. Hopefully we get them back because this is a must-win game for us. On other news, Witz looks to be getting his final VFL comeback. He's had that hand issue, had the split of the webbing and the infection. Looks to be over that. And what I mean. Marley Williams is out of his uh, moon boot and he's moving well, moving well around the training track. So good to see on that front. Alrighty guys, don't forget to hit us up on Twitter and Facebook, Pies Chat Show, another episode down, go Pies.